In this video, I'm going to show you how to use plain A4 copy paper to create some really basic effects as well as some helpful paper template techniques. Let's get into it right now. So paper is actually a really handy template that can be used for numerous things. First and foremost, if you want a straight edge, you can use paper. Spray with your airbrush nice and carefully and you're going to get a nice sharp edge. You can see how much that overspray travels and I've actually got some oversprayed edges from the paper because I was further away and it's drifted so keep that in mind. To avoid things like that what you can do is curl the paper so lifting the edges of the paper up like so you're going to get less chance that it leaves a definite edge and you can see it'll blend out rather than create a sharp edge. So that works really well if you want to just run a definite shade along a section and then you need it to stop. Instead of masking up around it, you can just lift those edges up and it's going to allow you to stop that edge in its tracks. You can obviously also use it for effects and just play around with it. Paper works really well to create starbursts. I've got a video showcasing how to do that and I'll pop that link in the description below for you. The other thing you can do is raise the paper off the surface. So just lifting it up and probably about a centimetre away from the surface, keeping the air on and that'll let you just do a nice little shadow and it allows for a much, much softer edge. You can also hold the paper in a spot and move it around and that's going to give you a bit of an effect as well. If you tear the paper, you can tear it into all different shapes. Then moving it around will allow you to create all sorts of different textures. And by changing your height, as well as the amount of paint, you'll get different amounts of intensity. You can also use paper templates for clouds. They don't work as well as using a paper towel, but they can at least give you a bit of a starting point and then you can blend in from there freehand. Obviously doing it with blue isn't ideal. But you get the idea. And using the similar shape to what you'd use for clouds, you can also use the edge for mountain ranges. And lift them up in the background so they're softer. Again, very basic, but good fun to start off with experimenting with these techniques when you're just learning and then you can mix in some freehand with it as well when you get a bit better. If you've watched my videos before you'll know how I enjoy using both freehand as well as templates. So the templates essentially to get a quick outline and then freehand to give it some depth and shape. You can see how easily I can create a quick mountain range. With a couple of sheets of torn paper. So a good one to practice, especially if you're just starting out. And then you can go back and sharpen them up if you wish. And then just a few freehand in the background. But it just goes to show you how versatile paper can be. And what if your artwork has a specific pattern that you've got to follow? Well, then you can use your hobby knife, sketch it on and just easily cut the paper to make your own freehand template. I do this a lot with copies, so when I print something out for an artwork, I'll cut the main features out. And obviously if you were gonna do this as an artwork, you would print the reference image to scale. 
And then with skulls, I'll just quickly cut out the eye sockets. You don't have to be too exact. And I'm just going to do this one really quickly just to show you. It's a nice simple way to create a basic paper template which you can use as your base. I don't like how that bit's coming down, so I'll just ignore that. So you can obviously change it as well. Again, just a reference. It doesn't have to be copied exactly. So there we have the eye sockets cut out. Now I'm just going to quickly run around this for the purpose of the video. So now I've quickly made two templates. So I have my positive template as well as the negative. And then starting off with the negative, I'm just going to lay that there. Obviously you'd mask off the sides to protect overspray. I'm just going to give it a light dusting. It's moving around a bit, but it's okay. So there's our outline and then dusting in the eye sockets, the nose. And then you can do a quick three quarter graduation. So meaning darker at the top where those sockets would be in shadow and do a graduated tone working down. And the same with the nose. That's just gonna help to give it a bit more depth straight away. And there we have it. You have your outline and now you can begin to render the skull. So you can see how quick and easy it was to get the design on there. You know, the eye sockets are in place. Now you can just play around with the rest of the skull, put in all the details and your artwork's done. And you haven't had to do any sketching on the surface, which is really handy if you are working on an automotive surface, because then you don't risk having any chalk or gray lead marks under the clear once you have clear coated it. So to fast track your learning, you can definitely check out our online airbrushing course at airbrushasylum.thinkific.com. I'll pop a link in the description below, or you can continue learning by watching some of the videos that are listed here. And until next time, Go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.